came to the uh, uh, to, to VR Gateway, uh, or their new name now. Castle Step Studio. Castle Step. I'm getting used to it. It's there. We are too. There's a. Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys know the, uh, the story of the uh, Macintosh launch, but uh, Steve Jobs wanted the Macintosh to have a voice synthesizer the day that it premiered it. He wanted it to actually say hello to everybody. Uh, but it didn't actually work. He totally faked the whole thing. Because it uh, turns out that when you're on the bleeding edge, it cuts you sometimes. And uh, tonight is a little bit of a story like that uh, in our hubris. Uh, we decided last night and this morning to try to push up a bunch of extra goodies to really knock the socks off everybody. Um, but it uh, seems to have negatively affected our servers. And then we are also a little bit of a, of a victim of our own success and the fact that I think we're getting a lot more traffic than we were expecting. So uh, we're going to do a demo here tonight. And if it doesn't go well, I ask you all to forgive me. Uh, we're a three-man team, practically a volunteer army, working off pocket change. So. It's uh, it's uh, it's not not exactly like WWDC around here. Uh, and to start off, uh, well, thanks for coming. I I see most of you guys have come to our previous events where we were beta, beta testing for tonight, and uh, it's great to have you all. Um, yeah, I'm here to talk about LiveScope and uh, really the dream behind it. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Well, I uh, I wanted to share this uh, with you guys. Can we turn down the lights a little bit? I think we got. Uh, Slightly dark slide. Yeah, that's much better. I, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of context and history about what led me here. Uh, I love the, the Garage Inventor shtick. I've been at it for about a decade now. When I started doing side projects, I was completely fascinated with, uh, with the metaverse and AR and VR. Ten years ago, when, when like, nobody was in it. And, uh, uh, and now that it's coming into, into maturity, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm coming back to it in full force, and that's one of the things we brought to life so, you know, Eye tracking, computers, uh, 3D, immersive holographic displays, all, all, as you can tell, there's a running theme, which is I have no money. So everything's made out of garbage and things like that. So, uh, I, st I started uh, getting into the quantified self movement, and uh, uh, I started uh, Smoke Signal, which was really the... Uh, Great grandfather of what I want to show you guys tonight, and it's been a it's been a really strange long road uh, to bring me back here. And I wanna I wanna just uh, you know, not just talk about myself, but talk about my, my core team here. You know, I have uh, these two guys kind of keep me in check, uh, actually bringing this stuff to reality. I really have to thank Kyle Barron and uh, uh, Kyle, who uh, came from me from Bitscoop, and Thomas Moore, who. We've known each other forever. He's a very talented mathematician. Now, now becoming quite the accomplished computer engineer, and computer scientist. So, uh, what what drives me? Well, 2018 is a really weird year, and uh, I love technology, but I feel like I trust it less and I control it less. You know, I'm sure you guys have heard about what's happening with personal data, personal autonomy, psychometrics, psychographics. Uh, uh, manipulation, you know, Cambridge Analytica is in the news, but they're pretty adorable compared to what Palantir and Booz Allen and IBM do on an everyday basis. And uh, it sucks. It's, it's, it, it's really, it, it seems kind of like uh, the robber barons of old. And uh, it, it gets even worse. Kyle and I, uh, we have conversations, and uh, they they start on a, as a text message, and they go to a phone call, and they go to an email, then we're on Skype, then we're in a physical location, then we're sharing documents. And if I ask, if I ask my computer, or if I ask myself, what have Kyle and I done? I'm going between my devices, websites, apps, jumping between all these silos I don't control to get an answer. And it's, uh, it's really inconvenient, and it's against, it's against my best interest. In fact, there's data I can't get out at all. You know, if I ask Thomas, uh, when have him and I been in the same place at the same time? You know, our phones know this. Verizon and Sprint know this. They have logs on it. But we don't have access to that. I can't compare my data and Thomas's data and get an answer to that. Uh, that information is not in my hands. The deck is stacked. The internet is an overwhelming and broken train of information. We are, we are being turned into the products, we are being manipulated at a grand 
scale. Uh, and, and the companies know this. The bottom line of the Fortune 1000 is, uh, is powered by this power change. You know, uh, we're, we're spending massive amounts of time in our applications. Uh, we're being dominated by a few big players who are controlling as much time as, uh, as in our lives as we go to work. Google right here, this is, a, this is one that's, that really gets to me. If you look at the way that they advertise uh, their location-based ads and how they can modify behavior, I mean, you could easily insert the word mind control into their, their descriptions of their products and it, it would be completely apt. Well, there's a good news. Uh, I, I have the solution for all of it. It's like problem solved. <laughs> It's called LifeScope. Uh, well, that's the idea. We're getting there. Uh, uh, it's, the, it's the first step. It's my kind of manifesto on uh, how the trend should be going in the opposite direction. And uh, uh, just one more shout out. This is, uh, it, it's all built on some work that I've been doing uh, for the last five years. You know, some of you guys know I started off in uh, military defense, you know, defense intelligence contracting and uh, with my company BitScoop. And uh, we, we've since moved out to California, got a little more hippie, and, uh, <laughs> and now, uh, now we're, we're taking this data technology and building LifeScope on it. And when I was in school, I took uh, a couple of data science and database courses. And, and uh, I realized that all the computers, all, all the, every application, every computer, every, uh, every service has its own database. And that's where my data is living. It's living somewhere else. And everybody's organizing their information in those data structures their own way. And uh, you know, there are tweets some places and messages somewhere else and pins somewhere else. And and ev everybody's uh, got their own representation, their own silo, their own uh, their own reinvention of the wheel. And my life is me interacting with these things. I go to a place, I talk to a person, I buy a thing, I watch a video, a piece of content. And uh, if I was to tell a story about myself, it would really be a, a collection of these events in my life. And, and that's uh, really what uh, LifeScope's all about. It's about allowing everybody, empowering everybody to uh, have their own database, their own data structure, their own self, their own representation of who they are on the internet that isn't out there in all the services and devices you use, but it's in one place. And it's, it's yours, under your control, and it's organized the way you think. You're probably asking, well, why, why do I need that? Well, because it will change the way you interact with the real world and the digital world, the way you uh, go about your life, to be empowered by your own information. Put a, to, to really clarify, LifeScope's an open platform for personal data returning ownership to the user. Well, and, and how it works is rather simple. You know, our information is pretty much in three places. It's out there on the services we use, like you know, Spotify, Google, GitHub, Facebook, Dropbox. It's, uh, it's accessed through the browser. Uh, you know, the browsers where we spend most of our time in, in the digital world. And then it's, uh, it's on our devices themselves. And uh, we built a API connector to get at all your services. Whatever services we can't get at with an API, we have a browser plugin to help you surface your own information and organize it. And then you know, your interactions with the digital and physical world uh, is also tracked on your device. And we get through that too phone and on your desktop. We take all that and we bring it together into LifeScope. So if you go to LifeScope.io and you sign up, it's, uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty simple. You just find what you'd like to connect, anything to everything. You want to use us to just track all the music you listen to across services? Great. You want to be a quant self weirdo like me and track you know, everything you do down to the millisecond? You can do that too. And we bring it together into a feed. The feed is a really intuitive, 
uh, uh, interface that we all we, we all use in every app today. And it's just a history tab of everything you've been up to that's being tracked. And with this feed, you can search and sort your information, find facets like people, places, or right here you can see events. And when you search for something, say Hawaiian photos, uh, I just go make a search of what uh, photos, where, draw a circle on a map around Hawaii, and I get all my Hawaiian photos. I can tag that search, or I can, I can save that search, excuse me, just the same way you save a bookmark. And now, every time I hit that save search, it'll show every photo I've taken from Hawaii. Always up to date bookmark uh, of some interesting or uh, important <coughs> question about myself that I regularly need answered. So that's search organizing and organizing your data. These saved searches are also shareable. So if you want to take that Hawaiian, uh, uh, Hawaiian scrapbook and embed it into your WordPress site or share it out to your friends, you can do that too. So uh, there's many different ways you can view your information. We, we show the feed as the, uh, as, the most, uh, as, as the default and easiest way. But let me just show you a, a different uh, look. Not in time, but in space. Uh, let me just show you a short slice, a 30-minute slice of my life. Uh, a few months ago, where I was going in Manhattan from Midtown West to Columbus Circle. And these are an example of the things that are being picked up by LifeScope. So I'm starting here in Midtown West, and I'm walking around, and I get a phone call from Lisa, and I hang it up, and uh, I go buy a hot dog on the street corner, you know, some country probably. And uh, then I get an email from my buddy Steve with a photo in it. And uh, then, uh, you, know, you can see Lisa here, where, where she was when I got the phone call, and I, uh, we decided to meet up here at the Starbucks where I checked in. And this is our digital biography. It's just, uh, it's just a 30-minute slice detailing my life. And uh, the real magic here is uh, LifeScope didn't collect this information firsthand. This is already things that are out there that we put together into one place. If you know of ad trackers and, and uh, analytics, uh, you know, thousands of companies are doing this uh, constantly about every one of us. They're forensically recreating our history to build you know, psychomorphic profiles and actually tar target and control and influence us. And uh, I want to give that visibility, that insight, that objective reality back to us. So just to show you a little bit more, this is our, uh, our, brow our browser extension. Uh, it's essentially, a, it, it goes beyond uh, uh, what uh, bookmarks and your history tab do to something a bit deeper. Uh, it's also a little more friendly to actually interface with. So just to give you an idea of what this is about, uh, your browser can actually figure out your location. It's the first thing it can do. It can help you uh, track your, your location history. Pretty much all browsers can do that now. But the really more interesting thing is, say I go to Netflix and I want to start recording my Netflix history in a place that I, I control. Um, I can go to Netflix, hit the, uh, hit, hit the uh, browser plugin, and say, always record this site. And then every time I visit Netflix, LifeScope will record. Uh, what I'm watching. And it'll extract out all the information of like, what was the TV show, uh, when was it, how much did I watch. Uh, and this is, a, this is an opt-in, it's just like bookmarking. We're, not, we're, not, we're crawling only what you tell us to. It can be an individual visit to every visit. Uh, it's very flexible. And uh, just to show the utility of that, imagine building a uh, playlist across Hulu, Netflix, HBO Go, Amazon Prime, of all your favorite shows and then sharing that with somebody else. Well, our ambition is to actually make that browser plugin uh, a completely agnostic place for you to share and remix content, create playlists, and, and so forth. And it goes well beyond like media. I can tell you it's, uh, it's really robust what we're trying to build. Uh, and here's just uh, a little bit more about uh, what, what you can do when you start to collect information from your browser, from your devices, from these services. Uh, you know, one of the favorites I love is uh, this one. This is called Trophy Case. This is one that our users found about a year and a half ago. They just connect their Steam account and their, uh, and their uh, Google.
Google Games, uh, their Google Play Games account, and it's a central place for gamers to keep uh, all their achievements. Uh, and, and here's another one right here. This is uh, YouTube, Spotify, uh, a couple other services, everything I've, I've been listening to in the last seven days. And then going back to the publishing feed, you know, say you want to take your uh, favorite selfies and uh, every time you see something in your feed, no matter if it's from Instagram, LinkedIn, what have you, you can easily uh, uh, bring it into one of your safe searches by tagging. It uh, goes into the safe search and I take the embed link from the safe search and I can put it on my blog or anywhere on the web and that website will always be up to date. It's a, it's a way for, to publish from anywhere. And it, uh, it works in reverse, too. If you go to Twitter and you actually give somebody a, a photograph, a hashtag, right on Twitter, you know, fly selfie, uh, LiveScope will pick up that hashtag, recognize it, and publish it directly. So you can go from one service to another. And it really reinvents the hashtag. This is something we did for Razor Technologies, just as kind of like a demonstration which is to show you can bring in rich content. You know, it's, uh, we can, we're, we're working with 360 videos, 3D elements, animations, and uh, you can tag them to uh, augmented reality markers or in physical space with augmented reality and create actual uh, physical streams and feeds of content as well, uh, all based off web tech, and we'll get into that in a minute. So, uh, what I've showed you up to this point is stuff that we've been maturating for uh, the last two years, on and off. And uh, we wanted, you know, we, as we, we showed this around, we wanted to actually make this a platform to truly open up the data uh, that we're collecting so anybody could build whatever they wanted, whatever their heart desired. So we built an API, an application programming interface, just the way that Facebook uh, allows you to build on top of their platform. And uh, we chose, uh, GraphQL uh, to be the technology that we use. And uh, just to speak to the more technical people in the audience, uh, GraphQL is an absolutely wonderful uh, uh, technology to build a platform on. And we selected it for two reasons. One is uh, it allows us to do social authentication. So LifeScope is the ultimate social passport that you could ever want. If you guys know me, I've, I'm uh, uh, rather deep into uh, user management and, so, and, and your digital identity. And I think that LiveScope's the ultimate incarnation. Imagine logging into an e-commerce app and you can uh, start to automate and create insights around you know, professional applications, creative applications, gaming, where you can take your entire history with you to every experience on the internet. Uh, and, and that's really what we get from social authentication. The other, the other thing we built was subscriptions. Uh, subscriptions are a rather modern uh, technology, and it essentially means that you can ask the questions of the LifeScope API and not just get an answer, but it will open up a pipe, essentially a mailbox, so that you'll, you'll get uh, the always up to date answer. Again, imagine I ask the GraphQL API uh, for all my photos and videos from Hawaii, and it gives me 700 photos that I've taken, photos and videos from Hawaii up to this very moment. But I can say, give me a subscription to that, and as I take photos and videos in Hawaii, uh, whoever made that subscription will get updates. And this is ways to generate feeds off yourself that can go into the power of other experiences. This just shows a little bit technically how we, we structure everything inside of this API. We're really going for least common denominator, really common and open standards. And uh, the first thing we did after building this API is we, we went, well, let's build something that's that uh, we would dream about. And uh, I love the metaverse. And uh, that's what, uh, and when I heard about web VR and I started to play with the, the augmented reality and virtual reality coming to the web, uh, I knew it was my time to jump in. We were looking at, at where web VR is going, projects like Mozilla Hubs, and uh, where LifeScope is. And we'd like to share with you a really ambitious concept that we've been, we've been building out. If you, if you dare, and if the demo gods uh, are, uh, are nice to us, go to lifescope.io slash XR right now, and uh, you should see some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So you can see right here, uh, this, this is a social uh, uh, gallery. 
So we're all in the same social space at the same time. It'll work with, across your phone, your desktop, a mobile VR headset, a like three degree of freedom, freedom headset, and a big walking headset, you know, six degree of freedom, full room experience headset. And you can see Thomas right here uh, uh, showing off uh, something powered by LifeScope. Yeah. Sweet. So uh, this, this shows uh, a bit more of what we're baking. Uh, yeah, so you'll be able to hear each other. You might want to, uh, the other morning I have to say, you might want to turn your uh, speakers down a little bit. Uh, so this, this right here is some of the stuff we have in the oven. Uh, we wanted to take that, uh, that map of, of Manhattan and make it more experiential. Imagine saying, take me back to this photo. And it zooms you back in your, you know, just, just, through your entrails to the exact place in Street View where you took a photo and shows the photo right in front of you. Uh, or you'd be able to say, when was the last time I was at Chipotle? Show me, uh, show me where, where two lines meet. And uh, this, you know, there's amazing open web standards right now to allow you to have these Google Earth experiences on total open platform. So uh, how we built all this is, uh, is around uh, Mozilla's great work. Uh, in April, uh, the Mozilla Reality team released uh, probably the coolest blog post I've seen in a long time. Does anybody know what responsive design is? You guys ever heard of that? Like you use a website, and it, uh, the same website works great on a phone and a tablet and a desktop, and it looks slightly different. It has a touch interface and a mouse interface. That's called responsive design. Uh, Mozilla wrote a proposal about how to take responsive design into the metaverse. So that phone app, that tablet app, that desktop app can go from a normal app to an augmented reality app to a virtual reality app, uh, all off the same code base. No installations, uh, no fancy hardware required. And uh, there's very few people, I think, uh, approaching this. It's a very new concept for Zot for, for development. But I think in the next uh, year, uh, you're going to see a tsunami of this, of this type of implementation. And it's, it's, uh, it's one thing my team is, is really bullish at becoming experts in. So uh, if, you want to if you want to know exactly how we're doing it, and uh, uh, who to credit for all the great stuff that we've been up to, and if you want to do it yourself, I'd point you to these three great frameworks that uh, we're contributing to. One is A-Frame, uh, which is uh, the, a web VR uh, technology. Uh, and you can see it at work right here. Another one's ARJS, which is really going to take old phones and new phones and create, create a common framework to create the latest augmented reality experiences. And uh, WebRTC, a tech that's been around for a number of years. If you use Hangouts or Uber Conference or many other technologies, you use WebRTC. It's what, uh, it's what uh, web uh, video chat runs on, web screen sharing runs on. And uh, it has a pretty significant role to play in, uh, in the upcoming web VR world. And uh, WebRTC is where you guys are hearing all that sound right now. Um, but it can go much farther. You can see here uh, motion capture, animation, playing back of cross-reality interfaces, being able to do physics and simulation real-time in the browser and on the phone. This is all possible thanks to these stacks. And uh, it's very early days, but uh, the, the pace is incredible in which this stuff is mature. And uh, we're trying to buy it this way. Uh, I also wanted to point out something uh, very technical. This is, uh, this is called the GLTF. It's, uh, it's one of the coolest things being developed right now, and I hardly hear anybody talking about it. I think this little file format is going to take over the whole world. Uh, so with this, you can describe anything in 3D space, uh, statically or dynamically moving. You can encode it in such a way that you can store it, and search it, and transmit it, all really robustly. And you can see right here, this is, a, this is an overcomplicated infographic, but it shows how you can do uh, facial animations, skeletal animations, uh, create and update dynamic worlds, and it, it's taken the world by storm. I think uh, geodata, uh, our personal information, the way that computer vision is going to work, uh, the way that VR is going to work, is all around this format. And I am very 
me and my team are working very intensely to master this because uh, right now LifeScope is tracking very basic events. It's tracking you know, when I make a post or when I write a document or when I take my pulse. But the, the, future, the future flow of data coming off of us is going to be thousands of times greater in resolution. We are going to be tracking the way that our kinetics are, the, our mannerisms, the way we walk. Uh, the world will, will be encoded into a 3D mesh that's like an objective reality uh, that uh, with, with centimeter, millimeter resolution, we'll, we'll be able to play back time as if we had a time machine in the digital world. And I believe that will all be encoded on this format, or one very similar. So uh, to show how we are working towards this, I go back to that map view again. And I want to show you the gateway concept <coughs> that we've been de developing. So uh, imagine I'm, uh, you know, I'm in Columbus Circle again, and I pull out my phone. You know, I've mentioned reality view this time, and I'm out there on the on the road, and I can see right in you know, Central Park uh, these gateways, and I can be like, oh, this is where I walked, you know, from a Starbucks through Central Park and to my friend's house two weeks ago. And I can look at the gateway, touch it, takes me to the feed view and exactly where I was back in that time. And uh, as I look out, I can also look down and I'll see a 3D topographic map that looks like a, a map, just you know, about the size of this, sta this stage. And on it, uh, that trail, that ant trail, going around, terminating right underneath my feet where I am right now. And uh, it allows me to have perfect definition of uh, where I am. And I think we can add thousands of times resolution. Like, you'll literally be able to play back yourself walking in a number of years. And I have a lot of ideas on, on how this is going to go. Uh, you know, Niantic, right up the road, and Google are building closed technologies right now to do this. And I can tell you right now, it's not going to be open source, and it's not going to be your database. Uh, this is coming, and I want it to be the way, the way I described right here. Again, going back into the technical side of things, this is really the, the workflow that we've been maturing and harping on. This is a pattern we think can be matured and replicated. This is technically what's going on inside of our system to create these shared virtual experiences. Essentially over here is the LiveScope API. Everybody gets a, everybody signs up for LiveScope, gets a secure dynamic place to store their information and share it. And it uses all these great technologies. I won't get into this right now. And then that's what powers our app experience on desktop, mobile, and cross reality. And uh, when we create a social space, what we're actually doing is connecting a bunch of peers together using WebSockets and WebRTC uh, to bring us to bring people together so they can share information out of their own personal life scope. Uh, stores and also uh, in real time pipe communication to each other. Right now we have that, uh, that experiential audio as you're kind of floating around in the head as a head. But um, Mozilla and others who are working on this are actually wanting to turn on those cameras on the devices. So you'll see in, uh, in a version that Mozilla is coming out with in about a week or so, you'll have an av a full avatar body and on your chest in VR, you'll see a screen, and it's actually your webcam. You'll have like a little Teletubby webcam, you know, <laughs> Teletubby television on your chest, but it's your webcam. You can actually see yourself, and you can pipe in your desktop, or uh, you know, the more ambitious things are drag something, drop something onto your web browser, like a file or an image or a video, and then pull it out of your chest in VR and bring it into the virtual space. These are all concepts that are being matured right now. Um, the, the difference between what everybody else is doing and what we're doing is we're trying to build a, a store, a key, a, an identity that you can take through this metaverse. And we're also trying to build a secure and scalable way to uh, create these social real-time spaces. And that's what we've really been harping on in this MVP. And you kind of see that with our technology. Like we're, we're really pushing the security and the performance uh, and the scalability right now um, to, to really the absolute limits. And 
Who here has heard of uh, uh, Webpack or WebAssembly? Anybody? Yeah, a couple of you. So this is a this is, these are technologies coming out right now that are going to uh, pretty much make uh, desktop apps and installables and the apps in your app store redundant. Because what they're doing is they're actually you ever noticed how like the the app in the in your web browser just isn't as buttery or performant as the desktop app you use every day. Well, there's there's going to be no difference very soon. Like those very high end video games that you play that require uh, require you to install stuff that's nothing like the web the web flash games of that old. That's all going away. The web browser is going to be able to do uh, pretty much anything uh, your computer can do. And you're never going to install anything again. Your, net, your, your friend's going to send you a link and, and you're there. You're in it. You're in Fortnite, in VR, AR, whatever it's going to be. Uh, all coming from these, these emerging web technologies. So, uh, you know, I, I brought you here with the, uh, the big shiny uh, gem that is uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, but I want to I wanna talk about something else, too. Uh, who here has Alexa? I do. Anybody get the weird bug where it like, started to randomly listen, like, laugh at you? Yeah, I know Kevin and I did. Yeah. Uh, did you, anybody uh, hear about the story where... Um, like certain certain skills go haywire and start sending personal conversations or uh, start uh, send, mm -hmm. taking your, your personal information like your credit card and, and telling them to uh, to random people. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it would be really great if I actually knew how the Alexa worked, so we could all say like, oh, it's fixed now. But uh, the Alexa is a closed system, and uh, in fact, they don't really they don't really talk about what they're doing and what they're going to do and what they're doing with the data. Uh, you know, GDPR really didn't, didn't really help that much, so I'm, I'm kind of turned off on Alexa. And that sucks because I love the voice interface, you know, I, I, I think it's existed since before, you know, Arthur C. Clarke's HAL 9000, and I, you know, I've always wanted to talk to the computer, you know, who, who doesn't want Kit in the car, right? <laughs> well, let me tell you a really weird fact. Ever since 2015, all your browsers can do what Alexa does. It can actually do speech synthesis and speech recognition. And it's not like janky, it's not like cruddy, it's really quite good. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, nobody's really built on this. There's, you know, Google has a voice search that nobody uses that's based on this technology, but not much else. And uh, uh, we think that should change. So uh, we've, been, we've been really thinking about uh, how, how to take LifeScope and extend it around the voice concept because it's something I've thought of for a really long time. Uh, Kyle and I actually built one of the first Alexa for business skills and, and we built a whole Alexa developer framework uh, just, just because we, we believe that, that speech is going to play a huge component in the technological future, especially in augmented reality and virtual reality. Now let me tell you how, why I think web speech is going to be a uh, killer with LifeScope. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take those galleries in our app and actually allow you to you run voice commands off of it. Show me the safe search. Hey, what did I do today? Uh, you know, uh, when, when was the last time I was uh, with Sarah? You know, and then it'll respond back to me. You know, you were with Sarah on Tuesday. Uh, you know, you edited 30 documents, then you did this, then you met with Jane, right? But uh, I think we can go s slightly further, very easily, which is you pop open your browser, you tell it to start to record a conversation, and it sits there and records a conversation. We have a beta that listens to everything you say, and then it kind of debounces and waits for you to be silent for 10, 10 seconds, and then it posts things up to LifeScope. So you can just throw LifeScope on during the conversation, and uh, it, it, it will record it for you. I, I, I imagine a lot of people who take notes want that. Um, and then if we get a little clever with machine learning, we start to get into the stuff that, that really, the stuff I dream about. Uh, the, the one I like the most is annotated conversation. Just imagine you're, uh, you know, you're talking and be like, Hey, remember when uh, we went to that concert two months ago? And it goes, oh yeah, you went to the Daft Punk concert two months ago at the, the Palladium or whatever. 
And it, it sends you a push notification. Just listens to what you say, has high confidence that it understands what you're talking about, knows that there's a reference in, life, in, in your LifeScope database, and then just annotates, it cites what you're saying. And it can be the converse, too. You can be like, remember when you said that means thing to me Tuesday? And it goes, no, there's no record of you ever being said that mean thing. Uh, who, who here is sort of uh, replica or, uh, or deep speech? Yeah. So that's, uh, Replica is, was a very uh, interesting company that was working in, with machine learning tech like TensorFlow to try to build digital humans, just like Google Duplex and DeepMind were doing. And what they built was a way to uh, in, start talking or training uh, 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 chatbots so they would start to, to mimic a real human. And it, they do so in three ways, uh, topic-based, persona-based, and emotion-based. Topic-based being, like, uh, I, you know, I know a lot about uh, web technology and Star Trek and, uh, and uh, you know, ship captains from the, the Napoleonic Wars. Like that, that's weird stuff that I know. So it knows these topics about me from LifeScope. You can build a, a, topic, a, a topic chatbot that would know the things that I know. And then a persona-based one, it would know, uh, you know, my mannerisms, my idioms, uh, my my dumb jokes. Uh, and then emotional-based one, it knows what happy me sounds like, sad me, uh, angry me, tired me. And together, if you if you start to use LifeScope to build these uh, these these models, you can actually build a very robust uh, proxy of yourself. Just imagine having a million minions that thought exactly like you, <laughs> that could do your bidding, or, or, or talk on your behalf, all the boring things that you don't want to. Uh, this, this is, uh, this is really, really like where contextual-based computing comes from. Uh, I, I think you can even go beyond chat impersonation to uh, where you're, you're talking to somebody, but where like, uh, you could use the LifeScope data to say, watch everything on Netflix and based on everything you know about me, pick Pick the perfect uh, playlist. Uh, find where I should live with next. Go on OK Cupid. Find who I should date next. And my next job is <laughs> nice.com. Right? Like uh, this is this is exactly what Amazon's trying to do for you. They're trying to uh, find that perfect recommendation, but they don't have data that's clean, complete, and up to date the way that we're building. They're not even close. And then that gets to the fourth, the the, the, uh, well, the very last one: AI storytelling. You know, we, we, our sense of self is really our story. And uh, I would love to read the biography uh, that the computer wrote on me. <laughs> and have it tell me in my own oral tradition. Um, and then, you know, this is, this is a pretty obvious one. I love infographics. Nothing gets me like a good chart. Uh, you, know, just, uh, you know, showing how I spend my day, who talks to me, me and my, my friend more. Who talks first? How do I spend my money? Where do I spend it? What on? How popular am I? You know, these are all things that can be judged by this information. Uh, if you go onto our API server, it actually has a, uh, a web interface, like a, like a portal. If you know our query language, you can, you can ask pretty much anything to it and get an answer. And GraphQL feeds into chart -load. We're working to build a, a version that's easier to use than Excel. So, <coughs> You know, I, I covered this a little bit before, but uh, I'm sure it's Santa Monica, so everybody here has an opinion on a blockchain. So I, 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 uh, I think that, that this collected data uh, should eventually be on our own blockchain. And I think that there's a, there's a lot of great reasons behind that, security, you know, uh, fall over because of the distribution. But I think that, that a, a, a crypto layer could, could be a, a really interesting place to monetize. I don't want to build a blockchain. I'd love to go to Ether or EOS or Civic or who, you know, whoever, IPFS, and use somebody else's. But LifeScope could de it should be the place that feeds these, these blockchains. It's, a, it's the only thing I've seen that could actually fill up these amazing blockchain technologies with meaningful data. And just, just imagine what that would be like. Imagine I bought this building right here. And I decided, you know what, I want to build it into something different. Maybe a restaurant, maybe retail, maybe commercial. Uh, but I need a little bit of demographic data. So I go 
I go to LifeScope, you know, a LifeScope powered blockchain, and I say, uh, give me all this information. Uh, give me uh, information about uh, uh, women uh, 18 to 35 who make over 100 grand a year. Where do they shop around here? Who do they hang out around here? What do they do around here? And we would all, all of us blockchain holders, would get a notification on our phone and would say, blah, 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 I would like to pay a thousand crypto to you to get this information off you. Would you like to sell it to them? Would you like to sell to them anonymously? Would you like to sell this discrete bit of information excluding certain things? Or would you like to sell an open pipe and a subscription to this person? Uh, we are being monetized right now. <laughs> you know, Facebook account ain't free. But you, ain't getting, you aren't getting paid for it. Uh, blockchains can change that. Data, data control can change that. And the same thing with machine learning. Uh, all, massive machine learning is being done right now to find correlations, predictions, detect anomalies, make suggestions all the time uh, about people. But uh, these, these great insights are not service to us. They are actually used against us. And it's, it's high time we have this empowerment. Uh, this heat map out here is uh, one of a few experiments that we've run on LiveScope data. We uh, took LiveScope data and we fed, we fed it into an undirected learning engine that was uh, all about uh, geo-information and predicting patterns in that ant trail that you would see. So if you've ever seen a heat map from a hurricane, you know, where it kind of shows where it's going you know, across the East Coast. We, I can build that for myself. You see my little land trail go all the way up to this present moment, and then it builds a heat map of where it thinks I'm going to go next, and a differential histogram of what it thinks I'm going to do next. And from that prediction, you can find correlations. You can improve your behavior with suggestion. You can uh, replicate yourself with impersonation. Yeah, these, these are the superpowers that our information can empower us to have. And with that, I bring us back to that, that theme uh, that I have on those photos of, uh, of Tim Cook and the Zuck and, what, <laughs> and the rest. Trust and control. You know, we're building, uh, we're, we're taking your information and we're collecting it, organizing it, securing it, and giving it back to you. Giving you the trust and control again. And uh, the properties of this change are open source, they're distributed, and they're, they're built in a way where you are not the product. And there really isn't anything else. Like, I, I, I wish I didn't have to build this. Uh, <laughs> I really do. Uh, but uh, you aren't going to get this anywhere. You going to go to the social networks for this? Uh, I don't think so. You ever tried to use Siri? Or Cortana for anything, they're not terribly useful. Digital assistants are pretty dumb. Uh, and if you ever try to use any life logging, quant self tools, can you even name one? Have you ever used one? They're terrible. Um, all of these things are all groping at the same uh, at the same uh, goal, which is helping shape the way that you go about your day and the way you make decisions and the way you plan, and the way you look back. And I, I think it should be done totally differently. And I'm not alone. Uh, we have uh, partners uh, that uh, have been helping us out. We, you know, Making 360, Inc. who's right here, uh, Co. in the Machine Learning Society, Novatech, we're around here somewhere. And uh, we're, even, we're even exploring uh, others. And uh, we, we've taken it around, shown it to influencers. I'd say uh, Chris Messina, who was the guy who actually proposed and implemented the hashtag at Twitter. Um, I had the for good fortune of hanging out with him a bunch. And I, I picked his brain on like my idea of where the hashtag was going and, and where LifeScope was going. And I, I, he's a big fan. Uh, also Adam Dotches of Lifehacker. And we've shown it to everyday people. Like uh, we have Lisa here, who's a lawyer. Um, it, it, it has infinite utility when you shape your, 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 your digital process around, around your own information. Uh, and it, it's vital in this, in the, because we really wanted to make it work for what matters to people. Yeah, I, 
I use this 20 times a day. Live scope is how I run my business, it's how I run my life, it's, it's my objective reality. I, I misremember things, and having that definition and that ease of lookup corrects, corrects the faulty human memory. Uh, I would love this to take off with wild, like wildfire. I think the world could benefit from more traceability, more accountability. I, I think some people might not like it, but I think the vast majority of us will, will be better for it. And you guys are probably all wondering, um, this is all great, kumbaya, uh, where's the cash? Like, how does this all make money? Because uh, even, even if it is with the best intention, the only way these things sustain is if they get revenue, and they're funded, and they're, and they're spoken of, and they're scaled. And really, uh, where we're at right now is uh, it's very much like WordPress. WordPress is a third of the internet, and some people pay for it, and some people don't. And uh, you can go to our GitHub page, grab our technology, uh, remix it, contribute to it, host your own, pick through the source code, make sure it's as secure and scalable as we said it is. Or you can go to lifescope.io, sign up right now, and there will always be a free, free solution on lifescope.io. But we're planning on actually building um, some more premium features, more real-time data, more robust publishing. And then we are uh, looking to actually take this, this data and uh, store it on one or several blockchains. And really that's where I think uh, the utility uh, of, of this and scalability are going, are going to take off. And uh, we're in early days, but this is our roadmap uh, to, to really take this in all the directions I described. And uh, if you'd like to be part of this, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for users, we're looking for partners, we're looking for people to come on board, volunteer, and work with us full time, uh, investors as always. And uh, this is a bit about our roadmap, and uh, we're, we're working rather hard. And uh, yeah, go check it out, sign up. We'll be publicly opening this up uh, in the next day or two, or we'll be firing this out to tons of people. Uh, but stay tuned. And uh, if you'd like to go into the weeds and actually learn with, you know, with fine grain re re uh, resolution about everything, check out our white paper, uh, which really goes into the machine learning, the voice, the VR, the AR, the big data, the data collection, everything. Under your control, and it's organized the way you think. Uh, really what uh, LiveScope's all about, it's about allowing everybody, empowering everybody to uh, have their own database, their own data structure, their own self, their own representation of who they are on the internet. And uh, I want to give that visibility, that insight, that objective reality back to us. And uh, with that, we're taking an obligation to be fully open source, fully MIT licensed, do whatever the hell we want with it. And, uh, and that, and yeah, the last slide took over. <laughs>